and define your terms. Because you, don't, you do not understand the symbolism in Christianity. It is an ancient petroglyph sun symbol. Now on the right hand side you will see young Christians today all around North America and probably in Europe too, something called See You at the Pole. In September of each year, young people get together in schools and colleges and universities and high schools, uh, Christians do, this is a Christian celebration, and they get into a circle around the sun cross that represents their Savior, God's Son. And so it's a celebration to show that they're Christians who are following the sun, which all the Christian churches around the world use the old ancient petroglyph sun symbol. Churches everywhere use the petroglyph sun. To explain to you, here is a Catholic on Ash Wednesday on the right. You get the petroglyph sun cross on your forehead. When you take communion in the Catholic Church, it's the old sun disc. Here in the Vatican, you will see a beautiful uh, uh, carving. And uh, this sculpture is an incredibly beautiful uh, sculpture in the Vatican. And on the right-hand side, you will see Blessed Virgin, which Mary, the Blessed Virgin, is, of course, holding her son. Look at it closely. This is in the Vatican. Mary is actually a virgin. This is why God's son is born of a virgin, because one of the constellations of the zodiac is Virgo the Virgin. Virgo the Virgin. So God's son she's holding represents the son in Virgo, the Virgin. Keep in mind, this is in the Vatican. Also in the Vatican, you will see a statue of Mary with the baby Jesus, who is trying to show you that he represents the Son. Then the older Jesus, he's still showing you, he represents the Son, S-U-N. We also saw that sun worship was not confined to Christians, but Jews also have their sun god, called Yahweh or Jehovah. Always you will see the four letters in the Hebrew alphabet for God's name. It's called the Tetragrammaton. And every time and in every, every instance you ever see the name of God, the four Hebrew letters in Tetragrammaton, which is the name of God, Every time you will ever see it, it is always within a sun. And on the right, you will see a picture of sun worship at the Jerusalem temple. Always tetragrammaton, God's name in Hebrew is with the sun, within the sun. Here's Moses praying to God's son, and here's the sun God for Christians to pray to Jesus. God's son behind his head shows you. A sun god. We know that Buddha, like Jesus, was also pictured as a sun god. Buddha, the wise Buddha, pictured with the halo of the sun around him, as Jesus on the right with the halo of sun around him. On the left, Buddha is attending to a sick person in bed, and on the right, Jesus being God's son, also attending to a sick person in bed. The ideas are the same. And last, we found that the Hindu god Krishna was one of the ancient models used for Jesus. Very important. We find that the Hindu god Krishna was one of the ancient models used for Jesus. So we see the links between the Christos, or Krishna, and Latin, the Christ. Christ, Krishna, Christos goes back to Lord Krishna, or the Christ One. And the Hindu pantheon, let's go back and remember that, Krishna, Christos, Christ. And the Hindu pantheon, by Sir Edward Moore, 
There's a whole article here about the crucified Krishna. Christ, Krishna was crucified in space with the solar radiance above him. The article says Krishna, the Christ of ancient India, who was crucified about 3000 BC, was the prototype for the crucified Jesus. Down on the bottom it says, only after the Council of Constantinople was a sacrificial human victim with the head of Apollonius of Tyana put on the cross in place of the lamb that used to represent the crucified Christ. What this is saying is that before the Council of Constantinople, there was no human or Jesus, man, hanging on a cross in Christianity nowhere. It was only after the Roman Council of Constantinople that it was decided by the church fathers they needed to put a human on the cross. This is history. And that human was was patterned after Apollonius of Tyana. So it's not Jesus on the Christian cross, it's Apollonius of Tyana. But the whole idea of putting a human on the cross comes from Krishna, the Christ of ancient India, who was, Christ, who was crucified 3000 BC, was the prototype of Christ Jesus. Here we have in the book, the Hindu Pantheon, talking about the crucified Krishna. You can get this book in the library. And there are many other books, reference books, talking about the same thing. But you see, Krishna is Christ of crucified in space. Krishna looks an awful lot like Christ. Because Christ, Christos, Christ, Krishna, it's all the same story. So, we see Christianity today as a retelling of the greatest story ever told. The Bible is referred to as the greatest story ever told. Of course it's the greatest story ever told. It's just a story. It's an encoded symbolic metaphor for the war between God's Son and the evil prince of darkness. And as I said, in the ancient Egypt, the prince of darkness was called Set because it got dark at sunset. So that's the greatest story ever told, is the war between light and darkness in the human mind. So we are left with the fact that modern day Christianity is an encoded metaphor for the symbolic attributes of the sun. Truly the sun is our risen savior, the light of the world. Of course the sun is your risen Savior. It does that every morning about 5 o'clock. It rises. And it is your Savior. If you don't think so, wait till it don't come up. So the whole idea of modern Christianity is an encoded symbolic metaphor for the sun who brings light and life and warmth into the human world. The ancients every morning would pray and thank God for sending his son, our risen Savior. This is a very ancient and old religion. Basically, we call it sun worship. And as I said, Jesus is now referred to as God's son, S-O-N. But in fact, it is S-U-N. Here in the Catholic Church, we have children being taught that this is a symbol for Jesus, God's Son, the light of the world. Of course the Son is the light of the world. Here's the Pope leading over a billion Catholics in sun worship. You do not see a man hanging on the cross. You see correctly it's the sun. The sun has always been the central symbol for Christianity throughout the world. Sun worship. The sun. 
And it would follow that God's Son dies on the cross, as you can see. It's interesting that on December 22nd, the beginning of the winter solstice, on December 22nd, 23rd, 24th, those three days the sun comes to a dead stop in the southern hemisphere next to a star constellation called the Southern Cross. And so for, here is a Southern Cross, and so for three days, December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, the sun which was moving southward each day finally stops on December 22nd at its lowest point in the southern sky connected directly to the Southern Cross. And so the ancient people said that anything that had been moving one degree each day southward and finally comes to rest for three days, then it was dead for three days. And then on December 25th, the sun begins to move one degree northward, which begins its annual journey back to the northern hemisphere. Therefore, the sun, which was dead in its tracks, dead for three days, December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, now moves one degree northward on December 25th, and we celebrate the resurrection of God's Son. Very simple concept. On the right, on the left, you will see a circle which represents the sun. The cross in the middle, and on the right, the sun on the cross. This is why churches all over the world always show the sun on the cross. The Southern Cross constellation, when the sun dies on December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, and on the 25th, is born again when it begins to move for the first time after three days of death, begins to move northward. So, correctly, the sun is on the cross. The Pope represents sun worship. Everywhere you see the cross in jewelry, in buildings, you will always see a circle on the cross. The circle is the sun dying on the cross the Southern Cross or the Cross of the Zodiac. Here children, innocent children are taught to get on their knees and pray to the Sun, God's Son, the light of the world. That same great Sun God who, gave, who gives the Pope and the princes of Europe, the kings and the rulers, their divine right of kings. What a shame. What a shame that 